generally speaking, people tend to be okay with other people wanting to defend themselves. And when we talk about defending ourselves, typically it's when we're out and about with our families, we might be going to a movie, doing whatever we normally would do out in public. And when you tell somebody that you carry a firearm to defend yourself, more than likely what they are expecting is a normal handgun. And when I say normal handgun, I'm talking about something like my Glock 19. If you go to a stranger and say something like, I carry a handgun to defend myself, yeah, sort of weird. We wouldn't just go do that to strangers, but generally speaking for many people, it wouldn't be mind blowing to hear that you carry a handgun like this every day to protect yourself. It's generally accepted. So as a company, one of the things we wanna be a part of is helping to change culture. And one of the things that we think everybody should consider is carrying something with a little bit more punch, a little bit more potency and better accuracy than a typical handgun. So today's video, what we're gonna do is dive into a couple of my personal bag guns that I carry with me quite literally every single day. And we're gonna run through the different lineup here, kind of explain the whys and the hows of each one. A couple things to note though, I have Vertex bags here. There's a lot of different bags on the market. I choose to carry with these bags. There's a lot of other bags that fill these roles really well. Vertex makes good stuff. They're good friends of ours, but definitely there's a lot of bags out there. So I'm not trying to narrow you guys down to just one thing but the setup that I have for various circumstances works for me. I've created a system that works really well. So we're gonna start with the bag that I carry the most. Now, the one thing that I'll note with my Gamut 2.0 bag here, I don't tend to carry this one in public as much. This bag fills a role for me to go back and forth to the shop. I wanna always have a carbine of some sort on hand, so this really allows me to have a little bit of firepower in my grip every single day and it gives me a convenient way to walk around the shop go in and out of parking lots and things like that without a lot of attention I really just want to blend in and so this is my 10.3556 build and this is probably one of my favorite guns it's also one of my most versatile guns in my lineup I'm going to pop the mag out here real quick and just make sure it's clear. And then we're going to go over the gun and the bag and a little bit of how I have this set up. So again, it's a 10.3 inch 5.56. One of the things that you're going to notice when you get into the world of bag guns, you're going to need to carry something compact. Really the longest barrel that I would say is even concealable at all is as you get into the 10.3 to 12.5 inch range. If you get longer than a 12.5, the bags get really big and you're gonna kind of stand out. And so my goal overwhelmingly with backpacks is blend in no matter where I am. And nobody's ever going to look at me and say, whoa, that dude's got a backpack, something's off. So this bag here, the Vertex Gamut 2.0, is just on the edge of what I would say would become too big. It's still small enough that I, I don't feel uncomfortable hiking with it. I go hunting with this bag all the time and there's a lot of functionality here. This really is a bag that's designed to do all sorts of things, but it's something to keep in mind when we are selecting a bag. I try to select colors that are earthy or grays and blues. I don't wear bags that have tons of molly on the outside. In fact, if a bag has molly on the outside, I don't use it in public. I just don't want somebody to look at me and say, hey, that dude's probably a tactical guy and he's probably got a rifle in his bag. I don't fully subscribe to the belief that Letting somebody know that you have a gun like that guarantees that you're gonna be a first target. I don't necessarily buy into that, but I do fully buy into the idea that more often than not, we should try to be gray men. And the modern Minuteman, in my belief, is somebody that's going to, again, have some sort of a primary weapon that you can respond immediately with. And that's the benefit of a on the waistband concealed pistol like a 9 millimeter 40 10 millimeter something like that uh, typically i'd recommend in a glock 19 size or something like this a little bit easier to shoot you can get a little bit more distance out of them but still this takes a lot of fundamentals it takes a lot of training to get really good with a handgun like this and it's the same thing with a rifle or an ar pistol like this 10.3 but at the end of the day these give you a huge advantage 
as far as distance or accuracy if we are in crowded locations. These are all reasons why we would decide to carry a bag gun. So on the Geisley here, this is a simple 10.3 inch Geisley upper. I call it my Geisley, but it's a hodgepodge of different parts. I do have a superlative arms piston kit on this particular build. Cloud defensive rain. This is the full size rain. I think it's like 1400 lumens, something like that. This is the Streamlight TLR VIR2. So I do use this gun under night vision. And this upper light here has IR laser, IR illuminator as well. So I can aim with my helmet mounted night vision. I have a Silencer Co. ASR flash hider on this thing. Pick mount for my bipod if we're out predator hunting or something like that. Aero precision lower. Um, Geisley trigger SDE. Law folder is going to be something that you're going to see me talk a lot about because if you want to carry a bag gun, you either have to go so small that the gun itself with a regular buffer tube is small enough to fit in a bag like this. And in the middle bag, I do have a gun that's like that. You could put this gun potentially in this bag, but the, the folder really allows you to take something with a barrel like this and really get it into a compact platform. So the law folder is a definite win. There's other options on the market. We haven't had as good of luck with the different folding adapters that we have tried. The other thing I'll mention is there's a lot of knockoffs on the market, so just be careful of that. So then as far as the charging handle, it is Geisley's charging handle, just extended. It's a little bit easier to get around. Vortex UH1 Gen 2 on this one. This is night vision compatible. And I mentioned that there's times when we are in something like a shopping mall or maybe in our church, if your church has a security team or something like that, or maybe even just outside and out and about, a magnifier may not be a bad idea. Uh, realistically, will a regular citizen have to use a magnifier in a gun like this in a defensive role? Probably not, but having a magnifier on this build gives me the options that I want. And again, this is used for so much more than just a defensive role. This is what I have at home with me all the time, have it in my Jeep with me all the time. If I'm bouncing to and from a different hiking spot or photo spot, this tends to be the gun that I carry with most. Has an SBA3 brace on it. You will notice that every firearm that I show you today, at minimum, is going to have some sort of a modern optic, a sling, and some sort of a way to retain your sling. I can't tell you enough how important it is to have a sling that is stowed away properly because if it's loose in your bag, you could potentially grab on the trigger, you could get things hung up. Generally speaking, drawing a rifle out of a bag is much slower than drawing a concealed handgun. So you could make the argument that when we're talking bag guns, they're kind of a secondary. But there are times when a regular citizen may have to respond and they have time or we might have to initiate something and that could be who knows the scenario but you know initiating might be you hear gunshots and i guess that's still a response but if you have the time to draw the rifle out of your bag you could make an argument that it makes sense to incorporate it into your edc so that's the geisley what i call my geisley 10.3 it's really just a 10.3 build with a ton of awesome parts but now let's talk about the bag a little bit and dive into what's in here so obviously a primary component is the firearm, but just as equally important is the medical. And I'm not going to dive into tons of different components that I have in here. That's not really the point of this video. The point of the video is I'm trying to consolidate a ton of different tools into one place that I know that even if I wake up late and I'm in a rush, I grab my bag, I know I've got a gun, I have two magazines, I have medical equipment, a couple tourniquets, chest seals, gauze, all of the stuff that I feel like I would need to have. One thing I will note as I go through some of these pockets is if you want to see a full rundown, I do have a couple of these bags on my personal YouTube channel, Keystone Carry. I'll put a card up here and link to some of those different videos where I really dive in depth with some of these bags. Generally speaking, on the opposite side of the bag in one of the pockets, I'm going to have one spare magazine. I don't look at this as a combat loadout kit. I look at this as a last resort. There's something really bad that went down. I need to get home or I'm in a mall or something. And again, I'm just a normal dude talking about this. So I'm not telling you from years and years of experience. 
I'm just trying to take data that other people are feeding me, things that I've seen in the world, trying to make the best response that I can with the tools that I have available. So typically in that pocket, I'll have a spare magazine. I also carry a bunch of paperwork in the back and I'm not gonna pull it all out, but I'm a licensed dealer. So I have documentation and other stuff that when I'm traveling, I like to keep with me in my bags. But a bag, when I'm looking at something to potentially carry a firearm, it's gotta have really easily accessible components and compartments. And on top of that, it has to make a lot of sense how it's laid out. One of the things you won't see in my bags is a lot of crap. I tend to keep my bags very clean. I don't have a lot of extra stuff. There's a couple batteries in the front components here and some people throw armor and different stuff like that. I don't have any of that in my bags. I just wanna have something that's very easily accessible and something that when I grab the gun, there's nothing else inside to get snug up on. And I'll just open this up all the way so you guys can see that because as you can see, there's virtually nothing in this bag. There's some wear and tear from the gun riding around because I've been using this bag for a couple years now. But this bag gun lays in here just like that. And you can tell it's pretty much as big as you can get for a bag like this. So a 10 and a half inch is gonna be pretty much your limit. But I do have a 12 and a half inch and it's a pretty big gun. And I'm gonna show you guys that if you absolutely had to, you could fit a 12 and a half. So many of you guys know of our machine gun build giggles. Got a D60 on here. This is an IWI Zion 15 machine gun. Again, superlative piston kit, law folder. This gun actually does fit, albeit very, 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 very snug. And you have to really coax it into place. But I did just a couple minutes ago have this thing zippered up and you would be able to actually carry a 12 and a half inch on your back. So that is absolutely the biggest gun that I think I would personally consider having, um, in a backpack at least, 12 and a half inch, something like that, because you're, you're just getting to the point where the bag is unreasonably big. And some folks would argue, why don't you just have a rifle in your car? Well, one of the things that I don't like is having a loose gun in my car and then I have to go somewhere because I don't like leaving firearms easily accessible. So this is my main carry. This is with me every single day. The medical that I showed you here, I just transfer between the different bags. Medical is very expensive. And I will admit that I've been putting off buying other kits to replicate the same thing bag to bag. The smarter solution would be to have a mirrored kit in every single bag. For now, I just switch between the bags. So that's my day-to-day -day back, back and forth to work, 10.3. Now let's talk about probably one of the more unique guns that I have, and it's one that you've probably seen, but you may not have. Now, if I told you there's a 300 Blackout SBR in here, some people would be like, wow, that's crazy. And it is crazy, let me show you. This is a Veritas Tactical 5-inch 300 Blackout. And I know there's already haters that are saying things like, 5 inches is not enough for ballistics, 5 inches is not enough for accuracy. Honestly, those people don't know what they're talking about. This particular gun chronographs at 1,600 feet per second, and that is with 130 grain spear varmint bullets. Now, I've shot a lot of critters with these things. They don't exit and they cause mayhem. So 1600 feet per second versus my nine millimeter, 147 grain bullets coming out at a thousand feet per second. You have multiple points where the gun is contacting your body, which means better accuracy and also better ballistics. We've got 600 feet per second more, which again, the whole ballistics thing, people throw around with handguns and it's all pretty much irrelevant. Putting bullets where they need to go is what we all should be trying to do but there is something to be said about having a rifle of this size that can be deployed out of a bag that's this small. So this is the Vertex EDC Transit Sling. And again, a trend that you're gonna see with these different bags is the fact that there's nothing else going on inside. And I cannot stress that enough. If you're gonna carry a gun in a bag, whether it's a pistol with some sort of a Velcro holster or a rifle like this, 
You should not have a ton of stuff in your bag because it's just, you're gonna fling it all over the place. It's gonna be a mess. Separate your compartments, dedicate certain compartments to certain things. So then on the front here of the bag, this is where I would put my medical equipment. And again, I take all the stuff from here, I clip it into these different webbed sections and it's all secure. I can open it up without stuff flying all over the place. As far as a spare magazine on this particular bag, I keep one right over here. And what you'll notice if you envision this on my back, it spins around. I'm able to get a reload right here, mags oriented in the right place, right up into the gun, then I can send it home. The other thing that I cannot stress enough is when I first started messing around with bags, you come up with these unrealistic expectations of how it's going to work out. Then you get on the range and you start running around or hiking or shooting in the woods, shooting from different distances, or taking carbine classes with backpacks. And you start realizing that your plan probably sucks. And you really have to try it out and figure out what's going to work because until you put rubber to the road and you actually figure out what you're doing, you don't know if any of this is gonna work. And so through time on the range, you know, different scenarios that I put together, I kind of really refined how I carry different guns in bags. So that would be the EDC Transit Sling. And again, on this particular gun, I have a flashlight, which is important. I'm not gonna say that it's necessarily the most critical part, depending on your budget. I would go good optic, sling, sling retention, folder, bag, and then get a flashlight on this thing. This is just a 400 lumen WML. It's not super impressive, but it does throw light. It lights stuff up. Um, the rain is definitely more powerful, but it's an option depending on your budget. And I've used this one for several years. The optic is the Sightmark Mini Shot M Spec, which I know some people right away are gonna be like, ooh, Sightmark, but it's actually performed really well. And again, I have a review of this optic on my Keystone Carry channel, if you're interested in that sort of thing. This is a gun that if you had to go to a movie or you had to go to the mall or you're in somewhere very, very public, but you want to conceal a rifle, this is the route that I would personally go. I can shoot over hundred yards with this accurately on mini ADAP targets. You're kind of pushing this particular gun. The other upper that I will carry with that lower, depending on what I'm doing is my seven and a half inch upper. So I kind of interchange this on that other SBR lower. And sometimes I'll carry the five inch. Sometimes I'll carry the seven and a half inch upper on this lower in the EDC ready pack. So it really just depends what I'm trying to do. But this one has a Viper PST one to four on it, offset red dot, and it's a pretty slick build. So the last gun I'm gonna show you is a little bit different. This is the EDC ready pack from Vertix. And again, I keep the compartments very, very minimalistic. On this particular bag, I keep my reload up front. As you can tell, that's just a Magpul AK mag. So you probably know what's in here. So right here is my Galil. So that's a 8.6 inch barrel. Again, we've got a Silencer Co. ASR flash hider. Um, I do have a bunch of different parts, RS Regulate Rail, k &S Adjustable Piston, the k &S Folder. I've got some Cerakote, which is unnecessary if you're bag carrying it. I'll dive into that then, but camo in different colors does matter depending on where you're at. But that was just done by Rep Rifle. And this gun here is a pretty potent little gun. I don't carry it as much as the five inch. I would say that most of my carry happens with the 10.3. So overall, this is just three different setups that you guys can carry with you. Definitely not telling you that this is the only way. When it comes to building guns and running backpack guns and all that stuff, there's so many different options. There's so much that goes into the thought process and all this. And the only thing that I would say is just to encourage you to experiment play around with what you think will work, but then hit the range and definitely run the stuff. Don't just throw it in a bag and assume that it's going to work. A lot of our steel target systems can be incorporated in your training so that you can try stuff, you know, stack targets around each other and set up a scenario where you have to take a really precise shot and there's collateral damage if you don't make that shot. Then ultimately tailor it to your environment and what you're trying to accomplish. The last thing that I wanted to talk about is a little bit of the colors of these guns. And one of the things that I don't do is carry around publicly a gun that's all black. And a lot of people are gonna be like, whoa, what's that, what's that about? 
Well, just generally speaking, a gun that's grays or blues like this, when it's slung on my body, tends to blend in a little bit better than something that's all black. People have been conditioned from Hollywood, media, politicians, they see scary black guns. And generally speaking, I dress to blend my gun in with me. I have looser jackets that are often grays or you know, greens or tans or something like that. They don't look tactical. I know that right now I'm wearing a multicam shirt, which isn't exactly non-tactical, but generally speaking, I'm not out in public with a jacket like this. And so I try to wear clothing that if I had to sling my gun, I would be able to blend in a little bit better. And maybe people around me wouldn't necessarily all of a sudden say, oh, that dude's got a rifle. He's a bad guy because that's an argument that people have against having a rifle and responding to mass casualty events. And so at the end of the day, we know that the world's dangerous, but the world's also a really good place. And I don't want people to look at a video like this and say, oh, they're fear mongering and they're trying to sell stuff and they're, no, I, we have no stake in this. We're not making any money talking to you guys about this stuff, but we care about you. We care about people. We think that communities are better as we change the culture and we make it more acceptable to be carrying stuff like this. I, I want to know that out in public, there's somebody around me that's good, that has good intentions and good training, that has a gun like this. Because we know that in mass shooter events, they often, when met with force, either kill themselves or give up. We also know that they are sometimes armed with rifles. Sometimes they have body armor and shotguns and things like that. And so what I want to do, what my intention is, make myself as formidable as possible. And yeah, I could always be working on my strength. I could be working on other things. And we always can be working on stuff. But we shouldn't just stop and say, okay, my Glock 19, I'm good enough. I shoot a couple times a year, good, check it off. No, shoot with your handgun a ton because I still believe that this is a primary response tool. But just like we saw recently at some of these mass shootings, there was time and with a good citizen with a gun like this on the table concealed in a backpack we could potentially take a shooter out of his role incapacitate him make him stop give him enough of a fight that there's nothing else that he can do but either stop or die literally get shot that we can respond to that but then also after that chaos is done or maybe we didn't even respond with a gun we have medical kit on hand so that we can be an asset to our community, not a liability. So guys, I know that's a lot to chew on and I know that we just brushed the surface here. The best thing you guys could do, and I really want you to let this sink in and think about it, watch this video front to back. If you got to this point, cool, pause it, go down in the comments section and let us know if there's anything specifically about this video you want us to dive into a little bit deeper. I know we didn't really go over tons of drills and shooting and stuff because this is a very complex topic and there's a lot of work to be done to make it culturally acceptable for it to be normal even for people to carry guns like this every single day on their body. So leave us a comment down there if there's anything about this topic you want us to dive into deeper. As always, we appreciate you guys for tuning in and subscribing to our channel. We're gonna dive into many more topics like this because again, one of our core missions is equipping you, empowering you, training you, and then changing the culture around citizens and firearms so that we can have a better future and we can gear up our children and their children to have more rights secured in the future. See you guys next time.